Okay, welcome back. Today I got uh, a treat. This is a CD player. Oh, this is a Sony CP CDP 200. This is a relic because I remember buying this brand new in the store, and that was the days of uh, emerging CD technology, and everything was exciting with that regard. And uh, I didn't buy the first generation of CD players because they were over a thousand bucks. I waited till the second generation to get the bugs out and I rushed out and bought this one. I think I paid like eight or nine hundred dollars back in 1980. Well here let's have a look at the back here. Oh it weighs a ton and it's just chock full of electronics. Uh, manufactured November 1983 so I bought this 1984 and it's, you know, how many years old now? But uh, pretty sparse. There's no optical output on this one. It has a line out and a courtesy outlet. And that's it. And it's a beast, I'll tell you. Bottom's removable, which is something you don't see in gear. So anyways, I got it plugged in. I haven't powered it up. It's been sitting on my shelf for the last 20 years. And yes, I do want to get it going again. I really like this CD player. It was had the controls. Oh boy, this is fighting with me here. The controls had a really good feel to them. Um, they were laid out nice. I like that. And uh, had a great looking display. It was sharp. It was crisp. Um, had a headphone jack, which I did use, by the way, but it doesn't put out much volume, but uh, it's still, it's as a standalone unit, you plug your headphones in, listen to a CD, that was great. So let's power it up and see what it does. So we got a vacuum thrust and display. Let's try opening it. Wow, that was pretty... I think it's going to need some lubrication for sure. Oh, I've got a CD here. Let me get it out. Everything's working against me today for some reason. Yeah, let's try this. Hit play. So I got the uh, Harman Kardon PM640 hooked up as a bench amp. Now listen to this piece of crap. If you can hear that. I guess I need to go back in and clean some switches. Interesting. Anyways, let's get this. So, I got it up here so I can turn the display on for you and you can see what's happening. So it's correctly showing there's a disc and it's showing default when you turn it on it shows track zero. But here, let's play this disc and see. It's making a chopping noise. See how it's, it's definitely got a servo problem. It's really having troubles finding the tracks. I hope maybe it's just dried up grease on the rails. Won't get flagged for copyright on that one. I kind of remember, oh sorry. I, 
I kind of remember this CD player doing this before when I before I put it in storage 20 years ago and my cure for it was I would um, I would do this I go to the last track let it seek and search and then go back to the first track and go to the last track and I would do that a few times and it seemed to like clear up on its own I think it was just dried up grease but it's still struggling it's finding the track is, def is definitely having a problem okay well let's pull the cover off and we'll see what it's not doing all right I've heard enough all right so we definitely know we got a problem here and uh, we got a noisy tray there's some gears in there that are making a lot of noise which I think is a grease problem it used to be silent when I did that now let's just try it we got all the screws out? I hope so oh look at the dust on this so the good news is the laser's not dead, we know that, because it's working. We got some serious cleaning up to do here. And you can see this dust on the back side where the ventilation was. It's just caked in there. We'll have to clean all that out. Uh, I have a feeling we'll find cracked solder joints on the, some of these boards. These boards are um, early 80s, single-sided. So I expect, fully expect to find cracks on some of these solder joints, on some of the connectors anyway, maybe the bigger chips, power transistors and stuff like that. Um, I looked online, I could not find a service manual for it, so I can't go through any of the alignment and setup. Um, so that's going to be a big uh, uh, blow for this. But uh, I think for now, I just want to confirm that the the drive mechanism is working properly and it's all lubricated and that it's not having a problem tracking or seeking for the track in that way because it seemed like it was really messed up. So uh, you know we've got servo. This is all. I can read this right here. This is spindle servo, sled servo, focus servo, uh, track servo. So I can go through and check some of this circuitry, make sure it's working. Um, but I don't know about setting up the gain for, like there's a gain here for focus, there's a, a gain here for tracking. Um, there's another potentiometer here. Another one here, CLV. I don't know what that means. I think that's a constant um, CLVS. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, here's another potentiometer, GFS. I don't know what that is. Attenuation mute. So let's. I think the first step is let's clean this. We got we got to clean this. So we'll do that first. Okay, so what I did is I blew out the back of the unit with uh, air, compressed air and I gave a little shot of air onto the, the lens of the laser pickup and it seems to be kind of smartening up here. Let's try it. I don't have an amplifier hooked up, but see now it's behaving. It's found track one and it started playing. Let's go track two. Doesn't have too much trouble finding the tracks now. Still a little choppy. Let's 
So the tracks are coming in good now. I think the dirty, uh, it was just a dirty laser, laser pickup. I can go and clean it with a swab after because it's a layer of dust on it. Seems to be finding all the tracks now. Last track. So I think we're going to be okay. I think it just needs a good cleaning and lubrication. Let's go back to track one. It's not too bad. It found it. See a little skip there? There we go again. See, so still having troubles. So let's uh, let's take the drive mechanism out and clean it and lubricate it and just go that way. So you got to appreciate these early generation CD players were very complicated at their for their day. Uh, they had a lot of new technology in them, and uh, so look at this. They have two boards that fold out. And you can do servicing on them. Uh, you got some rare, probably exotic manufactured chips from Sony. That's a servo driver chip. Some some other stuff here. A lot of there is some Sony chips in here. Like they they rolled their own. There's this uh, special Sony. Uh, what is this called? Low pass filter. That's a that's a custom device they made. There's two of them here actually, one for each channel. Okay. Got your analog to digital converter here, digital analog, sorry. And this is your power supply section. Audio amplifier output for the relays and bandpass filtering. Uh, error correction circuitry. Got some RAM here. Yeah, it's really complicated. The mechanics of this is complicated too. We've got one motor for loading and unloading the um, for the spindle. We've got one motor for the the sled. We got one motor for the tray. I think I saw another motor here somewhere. Maybe that's it. But uh, yeah, it's Pretty complicated. Let's try this. And uh, and I did find a few cracked solder joints on the power supply board. I'll touch those up, clean those up. I am going to check ESR on a lot of these capacitors. See here, a lot of these capacitors. I don't know if you can see this. This thing is difficult. You see, there's a lot of that. Uh, these are Elna capacitors. It's very good quality. They have Rubicons in there too, or no, sorry, Nichicons and Elna caps. But uh, considering your age, I still I'm still going to test them. Just to make sure everything's 100%. A lot of uh, a lot of effort went into building this, and uh, it it you know it served me very well for all the years I used it. But you know it just sat for a while, and I think it just got crusty. So uh, I think what I'm going to do first is I'll uh, touch up some of these cracked solder joints on some of these connectors and chips. And then I'll do an ESR check on some of this. They even have like circuit boards here on the on the laser pickup. There's power transistors and electrolytic caps. So I have to take all this apart and check all of these connections and ESR on these chips. And I definitely want to um, you know check, make sure all these switches, none of these are cracked, these connections. Because they see vibration all the time. And, uh, there's another circuit board buried in here. I'd have to dig that out and check it. 
So it's going to take me a while. I'll go through all that and do that right now. Okay, so after lots of cursing and a fight, I finally got this CD transport out of the chassis. And it's quite a beast. I don't know if you've ever seen something so complicated before. But uh, this is how they did it. Um, so now that I got this out, I wanted to make it take it out because it makes it easier to do a lot of work. Like I can re-lubricate these slide rails, both sides, and I can uh, remove these gears, clean all the old grease off. I can uh, re-lubricate, and these have adjustments. Little see, I don't know if you can see that on there, but each motor has like a little ball bearing on the end, and then there's adjustment screw. And that takes the end plate out of the shaft, so that has to be put back together and adjusted. Um, you know, there's more, there's more stuff here that needs to be disassembled and cleaned. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just easier just to take the transport out and do and work on it rather than fighting with it while it's in the chassis. So I'm going to get ahead, go ahead, and uh, you take this side off. This needs to be all lubricated. This is old grease. So I'll get cracking at it and get some stuff done here. So I took the sled motor out and I took these apart and lubricated everything. You got to be careful, there's springs inside here, um, anti-backlash springs that are, uh, these are split gears. And uh, got to make sure, because I had one fly out and I don't know where it went. So I had to get my springs out, my box of springs out and make a new one. See this thing here? Yeah, which wasn't fun, it took me a while. So this goes in here, this controls the sled. And right now I can free freewheel this. And it feels, it doesn't feel like it's very free. Like it's really dragging or something. So I'm gonna take this apart and lubricate this as well. So I think there's two rails, two screws. I think you just take out the screw. Let's see how this goes. Okay. Pull this rail out. Pull them both out actually. And I'm gonna clean this. clean off all the old grease because it's all contaminated with dust and dirt. I'll do the same for this one. This one's stuck. Now I've got a screw on this side that I can't access. Oh boy. Now, unless I remove the spindle motor, I can't get at that screw. So I'm just going to leave it in there and I'm going to clean it in place. I didn't even see much of this. I got it zoomed in too much. I got these linear bearings. Well, they're actually bushings. So let's try a little bit of lubrication. Now that's much better. I think that's what it needs. Reel in. And then, uh, yeah, that's much better. You can feel it. It's not dragging anymore. Okay, I'll reassemble that part and then I'll work on the tray, tray motor and the loading motor.
All right, I was going through relubricating re all of the mechanicals on this and I found a problem. This is the tray motor and uh, through a bunch of gear reduction it provides um, a torque for on this re on this gear to uh, on, on a rack. There's a rack here and uh, that moves the tray in and out. But if you listen to it, you hear that ticking? Well, I found there's a problem here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but if you look, this gear is cracked. So what I might have to do is, it's holding, like it's on there and it's it's not falling off or anything, but uh, that's what's making the ticking noise because every time it goes by that area with the crack, it's wider than the rest of the gears, the teeth, and it's got a lump there. I can feel it. So I think the solution is pull that gear off and uh, I'm going to attempt a epoxy. Well first I got to take it off and clean it because it does have grease on it and dirt. Uh, you can see all the lint and stuff that these gears pick up. But um, try and clean it the best I can so there's no grease in that crack and then I'll try epoxy and we'll see how it goes from there. And if all else fails I'll just have to reinstall it and use it as is. I do... I don't know if I have gears here. I think I threw a lot of them out. I used to keep a lot of um, mechanical gears like this from things I've scrapped. But uh, I'll see if I still have that around. So the bearings for the tray are it's free and easy. I'm not going to touch that. I'm not going to re-lube that. It's working very good. So uh, what I'll do is I'll start reassembling. And uh, put it back in and we'll try her out. Alright, I've been working on this drive mechanism. Get, taking things apart and lubricating. I have uh, lubricated this part. This is the chuckling motor. They call it chuckling motor <laughs> for chuckling. But uh, what this motor does is it operates a cam lever and operates another cam lever and it comes out to this thing that what this does is this clamps the disc when it's in play mode. It's a complicated um, mechanical apparatus that they devised and uh, from what I read online, there's a lot of problems with this. Um, you're probably knowing that in 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 more modern machines, all they use is a little magnetic disc, and it automatically clamps down the, the uh, this hinges. And uh, there's probably a little cam or something that lifts it when it, the tray comes out. But anyways, I'm getting off topic here. This is uh, notorious for problems. So I took it all apart, lubricated it. There's six ball bearings in here, and uh, like the spring, and that's what it does. It goes up and down, clamps the disc according to what this motor wants. You got to have some slack here in the cable because this is a highly flexible cable. I think they have they have stiff cables and then they have highly flexible ones. So this is a flexible one. So I did that. I took out the sled motor and the gears and re-lubricated everything and the sled rails and this moves a lot better now. I think that was part of the main problem that I've had for many years is this was sticking and the the optical head had a hard time finding the track. That's why it was doing a lot of skipping. Uh, I took apart and lubricated the tray motor and uh, its mechanics. These gears we were acting really sluggishly, sluggish, and I found out that the grease on these uh, there's three posts here that these nylon gears sit on. The grease inside there was really sticky, and it really dragged down the motor. That's it. The, the, the tray had a real hard time opening and closing, so I fixed that. I went through this board, checked all the ESR on the caps. They're good. Checked. Um, Cold solder joints, cracked solder joints. You know, I found I, I looked through the whole machine and I didn't find any cracked solder joints, but I looked some I found some that were questionable. 
So I just went through and resoldered all these connector solder joints, all these, and uh, you know it's it's going to last forever now. Uh, pretty much it for this bottom portion. There's all kinds of adjustments and stuff here. I I don't want to muck around with any of this. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to clean this laser pickup because if I look at the surface of the lens, it has all kinds of dirt and crud on top. And uh, to a degree when you use a CD player, the wind from the CD spinning will kind of blow that dust off. But uh, this thing's been sitting for, like I said, a lot of years. So I'm just going to use a little bit of alcohol. And the the main key here is a little bit. You don't want to get any liquids, any sprays, anything that you spray on this. You don't want anything going into the optical block. Because what it'll do is it'll coat the mirrors and mess everything up. It'll mess up the entire optical alignment. So I'm just going to put... a tiny tiny amount on a q-tip see how uh, that's too much so I gotta take some off take some off and then just give it a little swipe and get that dirt off there and roll it over and give it a dry okay now if I look at that That's much better. It doesn't have all that dirt and dust on it. So we'll go with that. So next step is put this back in the machine, connect it all up, and see how it performs. All right, I got it all back together. Another thing I did is I took the front panel off and cleaned the vacuum fluorescent display. These tend to get dusty in, inside over time and have that foggy look. So I cleaned it up. Let's try this out. Got a disc here. I like the tray that moves a lot faster. And it seems to be playing just fine. Let's see if we can track a few songs here. So it scans the next track and it finds it pretty quickly. So I think everything's working normally now. It doesn't take any time at all to seek the next track. So it's working pretty much normal now. Um, here, I'll give you a look at what's going on underneath when it seeks. So here's the sled and the rails, and this is the sled motor. And you can see it turning slowly. That's the servo telling it to advance because it's when it needs to follow the track, it produces a tracking signal, and that keeps it tracking. Let's seek uh, another... piece of dust in here. So I think it's doing a pretty good job on the uh, seek, seek function. Some new grease in here really helped, I think. It's moving quickly and it's doing its job. Another thing you got to keep uh, aware of is these cables. They have to have free movement. See, like as I move the sled over, these cables need to flex without binding up on something. 
This one's for the laser. And I believe these are the pickup pickup uh, lines for the uh, on the optical block. So everything seems to be normal. Shut this off. And it goes into a park. Now I think I still have a problem here because I'm going to eject the disc and then I'm going to close the tray and you'll see what happens. Why did it open? I don't know. Let's close it again. It won't stay shut. I think the problem is this optical sensor. There's an LED here and it's not lit. And uh, if I follow the wires, I think I have a broken connection here somewhere. If I wiggle this harness around, I don't see anything. There it was, I saw it flash. Yeah, we had a broken uh, broken wire in this cable. And I can confirm that with a continuity checker. So if I go to the red wire, up to the red wire, I think it is. I got continuity, the white wire, I got nothing. This LED is not lighting up and it's not telling the sensor that there's no disc. When I close it with N, no disc, it, it should tell that sensor there's no disc and it should just stay in a stop closed position, but it's not. It's sensing there's no disc, or it's actually sensing there's a disc because the light is not going through and the laser's not picking anything up. The laser is kind of confused because it thinks there's a disc in there but it's doing its laser focus and there's nothing so then it freaks out and ejects the the tray so uh, I need to fix this wire that runs here I'll show you I need to fix this wire it's got a break here I wonder if I can get the LED I'm turning this light off See that LED flash? I'll try closing it again. No LED. If I, there's, if I wiggle it, there we go. So I'll fix that wire and uh, we'll get this thing back working again. All right, so I did the wiring repair um, for these LEDs back to the board underneath, and let's check it out. Okay, the LED's lit, and it went down into the loaded position, and then it sits there, and it's idling. So I think we got it. Let's try it again with the disc. So it's working, and it appears everything's normal. Um, we could connect an amplifier and do a test, but uh, I'm pretty confident we fixed all the issues. The tray opens and closes at the proper speed, and the uh, disc is loading. It reads it, bang, it's working. 
doesn't take long for the laser to pick up. So I think that laser is a good condition. Uh, as far as adjustments go, I was reading online that the CP, or sorry, CD, CDP 200 is functionally identical to the CDP 101. Now I don't know if that's true or not. I can't find the service manual for this, but I did find the service manual for the 101. So I'll take a look at it and I'll see how compatible the two players are and I'll see if any of these um, adjustments can apply to both. And if so, then I'll maybe check a few adjustments, make sure that they're okay. Um, if I find anything that's really out of whack, I might go through with an alignment procedure. But uh, I kind of highly doubt anything's wrong with it right now because it's picking up uh, the track, it's decoding it, it's playing, everything looks good and it's doing it quickly. It doesn't have any troubles finding and seeking the next track. So, I think we're good. Alright, so uh, I don't know what else to add at this point. That's the one thing I didn't like about this, is that uh, you can't close it, the tray manually. You have to use the button. Okay. Some other features I liked about this uh, CD player is it has a pause function. And it just uh, gets this disc spinning and loaded. Um, you're ready to go. If you're doing a dub to a cassette, then it's, you know, it's easy. Another thing I like about it is it has this elapsed and remaining. So if you have it on elapsed, it tells you what seconds being chewed up on the song here, what song you're on, the index. And then if you hit remaining, it tells you how many minutes and seconds left on this disc. And that is a great feature in itself if you wanted to dub a, a CD over to a cassette, for example, that's 45 minutes long. And some CDs were over 45 minutes long, so you knew right away whether it's going to fit or not. And you can plan accordingly. So I think I might have run into another problem, or maybe potential problem anyway, I don't know if it is or not. The main CPU chip is getting quite hot. And uh, it's a little too hot for me to put my finger on for any amount of time. So I'm not comfortable with that. Chips shouldn't be running that hot. And I think it's, if I can't hold my skin on it, I've got my blur here. I'm going to see if I can measure this. If I can't hold my, uh, my skin on a component without burning, it's uh, usually over 60 degrees Celsius. And this thing's reading around 55 or so, I think 52. And it is quite warm. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this off. My I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount, let me zoom in. I'm just going to get an aluminum heat sink and just mount it there. And I'll... Uh, clean it first with some rubbing alcohol so the top surface is clean look at all that stuff coming off You want to make sure you clean it before you go to the next step. Yeah, that's good enough. My next step is I'm just going to use plain old silicone. All right, let me back this out. All right, so my heat sink, I'm just going to coat it with a very thin line of. Silicone. 
and this just gets mounted on like that and I'll just let that set up I won't touch it for a few hours maybe overnight I'll just leave this sit overnight and uh, that'll be heat synced all right I believe I got this sorted best I can yeah I think I got a result with uh, relubrication of the CD um, chassis all of the different gears and levers and whatever it was all just gunked up grease so I took it apart and cleaned it. Now it seems to be working great. Um, it finds the, the track quickly, which is a good sign. It's supposed to be able to do it in under two seconds. And it's doing it under two seconds easily. So I think everything's good with the electrical alignment of it. I'm not going to touch anything. Especially considering I don't have a service manual, and uh, if any of you come across a service manual, send it my way or let me know where I can get one. Point me to it, and I'll try alignment on it and see. But I don't think it needs it. Um, I tried translating the service manual from the uh, CDP 101 into this and they use the same the same circuits the same integrated circuits the same layout but um, different test points are labeled different and and you know for me to translate that service manual to this unit and try and figure out alignment procedures for it I'd have to pour over the schematic figure out where the pots are figure out what they do uh, you know and relocate them on here and it was just too much Considering I think it's working great. I don't even need to touch it. So I'm just going to leave this at that. I'm going to secure this down uh, You can still hear that gear. I didn't do anything with the gear. I left it alone. I didn't glue it I all I did was clean it and put it back in because I was afraid If I glued it it might split somewhere else And then if that's the case then I might be uh, having a gear that's split in two pieces then I really be in a bind but it's working it's just a little noisy and it's working at the normal speed now it's not dragging so everything's good there I think I'm just gonna leave this and use it as it is there's one other thing I forgot to mention here is um, I went through with the ESR meter and checked all of the capacitors and I didn't find any that were bad um, which kind of doesn't really surprise me. These are uh, Nichicons. It's populated with Nichicons, and then in uh, in the audio board here, they have uh, Elnas, and these are audio grade caps. Um, it's definitely a quality quality um, product as far as the caps go, and you know I didn't find anything bad, so I never changed anything out no parts replaced so it's a it's a good sign it's holding its own and uh, you know, I can keep going for many more years all right thanks for watching